Good afternoon, dear colleagues and guests. Today is the 18th of January 2021 at 3 p.m. Moscow time. Let me declare open a session of the Station Council for defense of thesis by Van Ilin for the degree of candidate of philological sciences, scientific specialty 10201, Russian language, on the theme constructions in the system of means of expression of evaluation in the modern Russian literary language against the background of the Chinese language. The order, St. Petersburg University, dated the 18th of uh, 2021, number 9610-1, appointed me Bogdanova Beglarian Natalia Viktorina, Doctor of Theological Sciences, Professor at the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University, was appointed chairman of this dissertation council. Other members of the dissertation council were appointed by the same order, and let me introduce them to you. In the remote access mode, we have Tatiana Igorevna Afanasieva, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor of the Department of Russian Language of St. Petersburg University. Tatiana Igorevna, can you see and hear us? Please say uh, yes, thank you. Dmitry Vladimirovich Rudnev, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Associate Professor of the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University. Dmitry Vladimirovich, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you. Tatiana Ivana Stieksova, Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor, Department of Modern Russian Literature and Teaching Methodology. Novosibirsk State Pedagogical University. Tatiana Ivanovna, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you perfectly well. Yekaterina Yurivna Protasova, Doctor of Pedagogical Sciences, Adjunct Professor, the Department of Languages, University of Helsinki, Finland. Yekaterina Yurivna, can you see and hear us? Yes, I can see you perfectly well. Also, the degree applicant is present, Vani Lin. Can you see? Can you hear us, Vanilin? Yes, all is well, thank you. Also, the academic advisor of the applicant, Maria Dmitrievna Voyekova, is present, Doctor of Theological Sciences Professor of the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University, Head of the Grammar Theory Department of the Institute of Linguistic Research, the Russian Academy of Sciences. Maria Dmitrievna, can you see? Can you hear us? Yes, I can see and hear you very well. To improve the quality of communication, dear colleagues, work in the remote access mode. Please remember to switch your microphones when not speaking, but please remember to switch when on when you are given the floor. Let me also inform you that our session is being recorded and broadcast and live at an online Spiritual University website. The speeches have been simultaneously translated from Russian into English or from English into Russian uh, as appropriate. Uh, during the uh, online broadcast, at the moment, an email is currently displayed to which, during the session, all the listeners may express their opinions and send questions to the degree applicant online regarding her thesis and the ongoing scientific discussion of your presentation. These questions shall be forwarded to me by our technical support, and I shall read them during the discussion uh, uh, session. Questions should be related strictly to the applicant's speech and the content of her thesis, and it is necessary to give full name, position, needs of employment, questions that are not related to the academic uh, discussion and the assessment of the thesis itself shall not be presented. In accordance with the order uh, of awarding academic degrees of Candidate of Sciences and Doctor of Sciences at St. Petersburg University, approved by the local regulations of St. Petersburg University, here and after referred as the order, a session of the dissertation council shall be considered competent if at least Two-thirds of the approved um, appointed members are present, but not less than four persons. Our council consists of five members, 
All five are present, including four council members in the remote access mode. All the visual contact has been established and with the degree applicant, it's been established with all the members. Thus, we have the quorum. Dear colleagues and dear council members, uh, we have a procedure of today's session, the total duration of approximately two hours. It has been published at the university website. Uh, shall I read it out or shall we start the procedure immediately? What do you think? So we, uh, yeah, we are familiar with the procedure, so we can start right away. No objections to that. If there are no objections, let me start the procedure. And once again, please remember to switch your, off your mobile phones. Please remember to switch off your mobile phones. And dear colleagues, dear work, working in remote access mode, uh, please keep your phones uh, at hand uh, so we could reach you in case of technical emergency. So let me start the, the session. Uh, the thesis by Vani Lin for the degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialty 10.0201, Russian language. On the theme, constructions in the system of means of expression of evaluation in the modern Russian literal language against the background of the Chinese language was accepted for defense by the order of the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University, dated the 27th of October, 2020, number 9555-1. Vaneline wrote her thesis at St. Petersburg University under the guidance of Doctor of Philological Sciences, Professor of the Russian Language Department of St. Petersburg University, Head of Department of Grammar Theory of Institute of Linguistic Research of Russian Academy of Sciences, Maria Dmitrievna Yekova, a number of publications uh, that set forth the main scientific results of the thesis, according to the enclosed list, is nine. In peer-reviewed journals from the list, approved by the Ministry of Science and Education of Russian Federation for publications. In journals indexed in the Scientometric databases, Web of Science and Scopus, no publications. The degree applicant submitted to the Academic Secretary of St. Petersburg University a full set of documents to accept the thesis for consideration and defense. All the documents comply with Article 12 of Section 3 of the order. All the documents submitted by the applicant, according to the information I received from the curator, comply with the applicable requirements and are kept in the applicant's attestation file. Copies are available from the uh, officer of the Dissertation Council Activity Support Department, who is now present at this session. Before I give the floor to the applicant, do you, the council members, have any general questions? to the applicant, and is it necessary to read and review the entire list of documents submitted by the applicant? No questions. I see there are no questions. Wanneline, the floor is yours. Please remember you have 15 minutes. I see. Thank you. Dear Chairman and dear Council Members, let me present to you the thesis on constructions in the system of means of expression of evaluation in the modern Russian literal language against the background of the Chinese language. In this paper, expressions such as Yes, and proper treatments too expensive for too many people to afford. The potential evaluation in these expressions is not associated with any of the lexical elements, and the negative and positive connotations are not explicitly expressed. 
the evaluative statements were chosen according to the criterion of unmistakable disagreement. Such a statement necessarily contains a positive and negative evaluation and can be challenged by the interlocutor, that is, as a subjective judgment of the speaker. The situation of subjective evaluation includes the following semantic roles. Subject of evaluation, object of evaluation, evaluative judgment, and potential justification. The aim of this work is the study of evaluative constructions and their role in the general system of the means of evaluation in Russian. Description uh, from the functional grammar. The main part of the work consists of three chapters. In the first chapter, the theoretical foundations of the study, I present information about the category of evaluation in the contemporary Russian language and diverse approaches to the study of constructions or syntactic phraseological units. The category of evaluation has been studied in detail in terms of lexical and syntactic means of expression. Uh, see works by Galina Sandra Zolotova, Yelena Mikhailovna, Volkova, etc. In these content-rich works, the level approach prevails. The authors concentrate their attention either on the evaluative lexics or on the syntactic structures. In our work, we use the functional approach based on the works of St. Petersburg School of Functional Grammar of Alexander Vladimir Bandarka. We try to describe the whole system of means of expression distinguishing the central and peripheral components. Especially important to include the evaluative constructions since they have not been included in the area of attention uh, in the level approach. The first attempt of this kind was made in Markelova's book, Pragmatics and Semantics of Means of Evaluation in Russia by Tatiana Vladimirovna Markelova, who considers a set of syntactic constructions introduced by a set of clause, introduced by clauses such as I think, I approve, etc. Our study of evaluation from the functional perspective does not quite share this view because all Markel has listed ways express evaluation in parallel with some other meaning, which does not correspond to the definition of nuclear animal elements and functional grammar. It seems that the functional semantic category of evaluation relies in Russian on the lexico-semantic core adjectives and adverbs with evaluative meaning in the function of predicate of syntactic constructions. However, in parallel with the core components, we also consider the periphery. In this case, it includes five types of constructions in which the evaluative semantics are explicitly represented. The second chapter, construction as one of the ways of expressing evaluation, contains a justification of why we chose the theoretical apparatus of grammar of constructions rather than the alternative models. The research part is devoted to analysis of the five potentially evaluative constructions with the element of justification in Russian on the basis of NKRNL data. The main results can be formulated as follows. With the help of corpus methods described earlier, uh, the constructions of the following types were described. I can't I can manage it. Uh, he's not the type of person. Uh, why not? See, 
one clever girl that listened. Uh, you can only love, but love, a, ty a typical means of expression of semantic components of the mentioned constructions described in detail. The changes in the formation of individual construction over the past two centuries are considered. We point out that in the late recent texts, speakers give preference to abbreviated structures, which corresponds to the general trend of grammaticalization. We demonstrated that the lexical specialization of semantic roles occurs the number of rare singular noun groups in Y position in construction, this is X, not by uh, Y, the role of frequent combination increases. Constructions that allow several functional interpretations, for example, evaluative and optative, as in the construction, all you can do is laugh, or I, I, sh uh, I only want to get home, tend to fix these functions to various formal modifications of the structure. Our work contains an element of comparing Chinese and Russian data. Uh, the third chapter, Ways of Expressing Evaluation in the Russian and Chinese, based on the novel, Medea and her children by Ludmila Ulitska and its translation into Chinese examines in detail the linguistic means uh, of evaluation in the novel by Ludmila Ulitskaya and its Chinese translation. Uh, as material, we looked for a modern text that includes the discussion of moral and ethical issues translated into Chinese and in demand among the Chinese readers. The means of evaluation in Russian and Chinese are considered with increased attention to the grammatical component, particle affiliation of the evaluative vocabulary and syntactic features of evaluative constructions as shown by the comparative analysis the evaluative statements in the russian and chinese languages translators manage to adequately convey the evaluative semantics in almost all cases the greatest changes occur in the translation of word forming components which are transferred into the lexical indicators of the Chinese language. For example, the Russian Yetechka baby is translated into Chinese as Ho Haizis, good baby. Some word derivatives can even be dropped uh, uh, without uh, affecting meaning. This usually happens in gradations of positive attribute are uh, shown, for example, the Russian uh, umin case translated as tumin, clever. Translators substitute some culturally specific benchmarks of evaluation, compare Russian svinyar, which in Chinese is translated as, was translated as hair sucker, trying to put Oliska's novel into the new cultural context. Thus, as a result of this research, semantics of evaluation in Russian have been represented as a functional semantic field with a lexico-syntactic core. The potentially evaluative constructions with the element of justification in this system belong to the peripheral means of expressing evaluation in Russian. Uh, my presentation is over. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Eileen. Dear council members, do you have any questions 
but strictly regarding the presentation. Dmitry Vladimirovich, would you like to ask a question? Uh, I'd like to clarify something. You said that abbreviated structures, manifestation of grammaticalization. Is this grammaticalization and categorization? Are these two are these two phenomena the same? You mean grammaticalization and you said that some structures you have studied over the time they are abbreviated and the shortened versions are used and you call this grammaticalization. So I have a question, grammaticalization or idiomatization or are these two terms, do they mean the same? Thank you for this question. Uh, right now, I know the definition of grammaticalization as for idiomatization. Maybe it's necessary, it's better to look it up in a dictionary. As far as I know, grammaticalization is an appropriate term here. And uh, according to our observations, some sentences, some uh, expressions become more frequent, but at the same time, they they do not correspond to the rules, standard grammar rules. Grammaticalization means these expressions turn into uh, from, from uh, less grammaticized usage. For example, in my work, uh, I compare the two expressions, uh, why not? And I said that why not the uh, content uh, such type of sentence uh, be became less frequent uh, as compared with why not. So here, grammaticalization, I think, explains quite well why such gradation exists. Dmitry Vladimirovich, are you satisfied? Yes, thank you. Colleagues, do you have more questions, please? Council members have no questions. Do we have any external questions? No external questions. Uh, very well. Then let us proceed to officially to discussion of the thesis. And I will give the floor to the council members. And as Vanilin told me uh, already, she would like to answer all the reviews in the end. So let's, uh, dear council members, dissertation council members, since all the reviews were published at St. Petersburg University website, uh, for, I suggest you don't read your entire review, just focus on the main issues and suggestions. Uh, do you have any objections to that? I see there are no objections. Then let me give the floor to Ekaterina Yurevna Pratasova. Ekaterina Yurevna, uh, what are the key points of your review? Dear colleagues, the axiological axis lies in the core of anthropological linguistics, provides basic understanding of values and as a starting point for various in the ancient tradition of showing an individual cannot cope with life tasks uh, without expressing to 
some degree his subjective position uh, in a number of indicators and in the concept of Alexander Lynch Bandarka it's uh, positive, neutral or negative settings expressed by various means. That is why comparing Russian language with the Chinese is so relevant. Uh, by far, understanding interpretation in one language on the basis of comparison into other language could not be experienced uh, how printed word is perceived by uh, representatives of another nation. The theoretical framework of functional grammar in combination with the construction and analysis the basis of the national corps of the Russian language, core and periphery and variant of meaning and the material of this study. Olitska's novel, Mini and His Children, uh, everything is well selected and corresponds to the current state of linguistics. Of course, interpretation is given on the basis of extra-linguistic knowledge, semantical and grammatic uh, grammar information, explicit, explicit and implicit, but the most interesting the detail and the work contains quite a number of them. The theoretical powers is of general nature and uh, wide scope, maybe from the point of a foreigner, is uh, of everyday subjects, not as, as actions, the most diff challenging part. Usually, researchers leave it themselves to the obvious things, such as they pay attention to comparison with animals, uh, a pig substitute for hair, according with uh, concepts of Russian and Chinese or color in the picture of the world. There's one, one such comparison is also mentioned, uncontrolled of evaluative uh, features is, uh, leads to uh, communication failures. The work has be, will be a great support to translation because it avoids many traps uh, for the interpreter looking for equivalence of quality and this has a high practical significance. Considering the structure, uh, is X is not by uh, Y. It's a, a historical, syntactic, semantic, temporal, a frequent, and other perspective. From the analysis, it becomes obvious that uh, Y function can be an object to which the speaker attributes changes. So what is Y sets certain parameters for uh, size, such as and since this set expression, some word is used in the Y position it gets uh, imaginary, spatial, and quantified characteristics. Surprisingly, that the semantics has certain limitation. It's uh, not clear, uh, phrase, uh, not uh, for your leap or leaps. There's no, uh, the difference is not obvious, and uh, it can be with the studied structure. Uh, he's not the man for the job. The final table in the annex, of course, uh, evokes discussion. For example, uh, not uh, on the theme and not in the order, and not on the rank, uh, not on your uh, position, not in your rank. The example, there are several examples of this, and the first variant still prevails. There, the rank has been officially abolished. Maybe this manifests the activity of the construction and relevance of its study. The structure uh, Y is not uh, so uh, egg, uh, Y to, to be P. It's, there is certain doubt in interpretation of examples 108 and 109 that fear here is evaluation as well as other structures. Uh, why not P, X, and Y? This uh, phraseologism is quite typical. X uh, only or does but P. So this uh, analyzed. Now the uh, common feature here is comparing it with some hypothetical situation where it's necessary something from uh, other than reality. Spe specific behavior features. So the five constructions are divided into three groups, which express negative, positive, or uh, more complex evaluation. It seems that evaluation depends on the speaker, and the author relies on such considerations. So, anthropological linguistics would be interpreted depending on the speaker intention and its axiological network. Unfortunately, phraseologisms of this type are uh, very frequent in speech, uh, seldom are described in the textbooks. In the third chapter, the uses against the background of the Chinese language 
which sounds as an, a variant of uh, appropriate in the work of Russian language. The review of means of, ex of evaluation is, describes irony. It was quite hard to choose adequate translations for all these expressions. The author emphasizes that in the Chinese language, not so much the choice of uh, words, but uh, their combinations are relevant. And direct reference, immediate reference to something good or bad, and uh, combining several meanings. Various evaluations at the level of nomination and level of expression is a particular. Unfortunately, I can uh, only judge on the basis of big translation, which manifests many ways of explication of the writer's intention. On the other hand, uh, the combination of modality and evaluation in the Russian language is uh, uh, decomposed into components. A migration of elements of meaning from one word to another is possible and even is recommended when conveying the general meaning in, uh, in translation. So it's so good to see examples illustrating this. The author of the study could not avoid her positive, expressing her positive attitude to the novel and defining why it evokes positive emotions in, in Chinese. Of course, as uh, she can certainly judge on the author's style of Litska, uh, which is a, a natural combination. In conclusion, the author states the system of expression of means in Russian Chinese is quite similar. And uh, maybe the author here is speaking, first of all, about the system uh, the uh, general human system, while specific features such as grammar, author's intention, cultural stereotypes can be very different. Though the uh, list includes Vilichko, uh, the author never quotes her because she was among the first to took up uh, the theory of teaching phraseology in general, the thesis covers is a well is a very carefully performed and only the uh, main results so I have two questions uh, the uh, comment that translation is uh, more straightforward than the original here I have a question how in your opinion this can be explained is it because of uh, Chinese language or specific of uh, features of individual translation. The second question is theoretical. You say rational and emotional evaluation. Uh, you say for the rational uh, evaluation, explicit, and for the emotional evaluation is characterized by implicit expression of subject and object. In your study, all three types of evalu evaluation are important, implicit uh, definition. So how do you define mind and emotion, do you have any criteria uh, to oppo for opposing them? The thesis by the, on the uh, structures in the system of means of the expression of relation in the modern contemporary Russian literal language corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order on the 1st of September 2016 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University and the degree applicant uh, deserves being awarded the degree of Canada Philological Sciences specialty 10.0201 Russian language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you, Yekaterina Yurievna. Uh, you, you will get answers to your questions in the end. Now I'd like to give the floor to Tatiana Igorevna Afanasieva. Tatiana Igorevna, the floor is yours. The thesis of Vanilin is dedicated to a specific class of constructions aimed at potential expression of relation such models in the contemporary Russian language there the meaning is not explicit but is conveyed through a specific uh, uh, construction. In her work, Vanilin describes five such constructions in detail. I am not the man for this job. I'm not the one to. Why not a good girl? Uh, all you can do. Uh, all the five types were mentioned in her presentation. 
Uh, these have not been discussed uh, systematically before, and th that's where the novelty of the work is, uh, which agrees with the current trends of more, uh, contemporary Russian studies and the Chinese language. This comparative approach is of interest. In the introduction, traditionally, the author sets forth goals and uh, aims of her study, the theoretical basis and the method. The first chapter is dedicated to the theoretical provisions of the construction grammar used in two study chapters. She describes all the details of semantics and constructions on all language levels and provides opinions uh, or by various scientists. In addition to that, the author uses provisions of the Moscow semiotic School of Semiotics, Functional Grammar of uh, Dr. Bandarka and Novosibirsk Syntax School of Syntaxes, comparing uh, the achievements of various uh, schools makes the work fundamental. The second chapter is dedicated to analysis of the chosen structures uh, taken from the National Corps of the Russian language, also described in detail in the uh, thesis. She then describes properties of each phraseological unit and then describing them takes into, uh, considers all the aspects, uh, lexical aspects, function and uh, grammar characteristics of all the structures. The one described in most detail is this why uh, uh, was which is uh, most frequently used and it has been in use since the middle of the 18th century. The author concludes that such uh, evaluation construction uh, mostly describes uh, how appropriate or inappropriate uh, the object is. Other uh, structures are less frequent, but quite diverse. As a result of the study of all the third construction, the author concludes that they are aimed at expressing negative uh, evaluations, and others can combine both the negative and positive evaluations. And the third chapter is dedicated. This is as a separate part. The description of evaluative structures in the Chinese language uh, in Almila Litska's novel translation. The theoretical part of this chapter introduces into the study of evaluative uh, meanings in the Chinese language based on the work of Chinese scientists. Uh, the constructions with evaluation uh, described during the past 20 years by Chinese linguists. Uh, in the research part of research part of chapter three, Van Ling compares the constructions of the Chinese translation of the above mentioned novel, 589 examples she has analyzed, and concludes that in translation, uh, the mostly the explicit meaning or explicit uh, uh, expression is more common, prevails lexical. Yes, and the Chinese language, as compared with the Russian language, uses a limited number of morphemes that can express evaluation. And uh, the conclusion provides the results of the study, compares Russian Chinese means of uh, expressing evaluation. The thesis by Lin uh, gives the impression of carefully written, uh, properly written, and careful work. Yet, uh, there is. A, I have a number of minor questions and comments. When analy anal uh, analyzing the translation of Ulitska's novel, uh, there is no mention if there are structures described in this. If it contains structures described in the second chapter, if it does, what variants of translation are used by the Chinese translator? Uh, does he copy the structure or only conveys its meaning? Does he recognize the structures? Some expressions are uh, uh, only in a given context. For example, on page 126, example 179, uh, they are a perfect match. They are a really good match. 
here it's hard to say if the information uh, if the evaluation is positive or negative even the word appropriate added in translation uh, cannot uh, show judgment so here the question is what is the role of implicit evaluation and if there are differences between implicit evaluation in the Russian Chinese languages and finally uh, another it's hard to agree that the Chinese equivalent of ish particle or rather in examples 184 105 is equivalent to partic particle nu uh, in corresponding Russian example so here I have a question how would you define the meaning of particles in your material. These comments by no means affect the overall positive impression uh, made by this paper. Uh, they are of specific nature and they prove that the work is interesting and, uh, and the desire to understand the thesis by Van Lin construction in the system of means of expressing evaluation in the contemporary Russian literal language against the background that corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order the 1st of September 2016 on the order of awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University <coughs> and the degree applicant Van Lin fully deserves being awarded the degree of Candidate of Philological Sciences, Specialty 10.0201, Russian Language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Thank you, Tatiana Igorevna. Uh, you will get answers to your questions later. And I would like to give the floor to the third member of the Dissertation Council, Tatiana Ivanovna Steksova. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, let me say that the work by Van Elin uh, appeared to be very interesting, relevant, modern, and as any interesting scientific paper, it certainly provokes many questions, not in order to catch out the author, but because these are the questions are really interesting. The first chapter where she considers the theoretical foundations of her study uh, with uh, given all detailed analysis, some theoretical provisions provoke questions and require clarification. One of such questions, uh, one such question has already been about the relation about gram grammaticalization and phraseologization. So here I'd like to clarify uh, if the author defines dictum and modus evaluation, the uh, object evaluation can be a property or the speaker attitude to uh, a manifestation of I play the chess badly. It's bad. It's, uh, it's a shame I don't play chess. The uh, quality of the evaluation is different in the two examples, though verbally uh, they are expressed with similar words. The relevance to uh, re re is good or is bad that, and so, uh, expressing evaluation by no means comments the difference expressed by the structure. It's good to read. Reading is good. So it would be interesting for Vanilin to clarify if she considers necessary to define the structures into uh, evaluative words or without the use of evaluative words. I think this is a working principle, but maybe uh, it's not the only one to be used. And in my opinion, this is bad for the thesis. Speaking of the second part of the study, the theoretical chapter, we're talking about grammaticalization, I would like to say one thing. I think the author should pay attention to analysis of the Far Eastern uh, 
linguistic schools, Elena Sheremetyeva and her followers, because uh, she has done a lot of work in this field. As if we talk about the study, uh, the research chapter, it seemed to me uh, the analysis is very convincing, uh, mostly, but uh, some specific issue, some specific issues. I would like to ask some questions. But the first question is: If you do think that the lexical, if there are any lexical limitations, uh, n not for uh, why? Is this structure, does this structure express only evaluative semantics or there are some homonymous, does it have any homonymous structures? X does not hear or uh, X is the man. Uh, Pabaraban and Poplichur are similar structures. So, so will semantics be the same or are these homophones? In addition, it would be, I think it would be interesting to discuss the following. Van Lin states that to express predicative, the most common case is the use of infinitive. Uh, uh, so the, of the, the characterized person or object. But the language material she uses in her paper sh demonstrates uh, that uh, e is not used only is used in uh, clauses with different subjects. Natasha's not a girl to bother uh, about small things. Uh, I'm not as so famous to be displayed in a shop window. Let's see what's inside. So the subjects are different. In the first case, we may transform uh, the uh, sentence into affirmative. And in the second case, such transformation is impossible, seems impossible. The second question, do you consider the work, why not uh, a synonymous with uh, uh, not, why not let me die, Pyfel, they said they operated on me. Uh, why not cheat on her uh, quietly? Uh, why not? Is this Nyedbe and Nyedstobe? Are the is this the same structure? Or are these two different structures? As for the sentences, as good for you to display character and pull off. So here, Y X communicates uh, evaluation and explanatory nature. Here, I cannot fully agree with you. According to Tatiana Andreevna Kolosova's uh, theory. Uh, an important element is missing. Uh, I say well done, uh, Molodets, and it applies not to be applied not to the evaluative component, but to uh, predicative unit which is missing. Uh, does Kolosov's theory contradict your theory? Uh, don't you think that her approach can explain your observations? Most frequent word is happiness, and the word. A uh, clever girl and uh, fool is different. This is understandable if you accept the opinion of Tatiana Andreevna as it reveals what happiness is and will say, well done, explains uh, the reasons for choosing such evaluation. So, in my opinion, these words function in a different, in different type in, uh, of sentences. These, uh, my questions are uh, points for discussion because the uh, there is no universal opinion on these points uh, the third chapter uh, seems to be very interesting has great has good practical significance but foreigners studying the Russian language for them uh, understanding such structures is challenging uh, because they rely on direct meaning of the words and uh, the uh, textbooks uh, for learners of Russian as a foreign language do not contain such information and for advanced students, for translators, uh, this information is very important and highly relevant. So, un uh, so attention to such colloquial structures is very important and the fact that Vanilin uh, describes them is uh, very 
reasonable, appears to be very reasonable to me. Also, I'd like to add that a special positive is the language of the thesis. It's accurate uh, within the scientific framework and is simple and easy to read. So reading the work was easy and interesting. And certainly, uh, this enables us to uh, evaluate the work highly. So the work by Vine Lin corresponds to the basic requirements set on the 1st of September 2016, and Vine Lin deserves being awarded the desired degree. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana Ivanovna. Then ne next, I'd like to give the floor to Dmitry Vladimirovich. Thank you, Natalia Viktorovna. I will use the opportunity to make my review short because some points have already been mentioned several times. First, I'd like to repeat what was said by my colleagues and their compliments to Vanilin's thesis. Also, uh, I think the work has been performed on a high level. The text is very well uh, written and easy to read. The work is interesting. And so all the parts of the work seem interesting to me. The list of literature uh, shows the author uh, has mastered uh, the scientific literature. And the articles reflect adequately the uh, content of the thesis. Uh, so I will not repeat and, uh, the content of the chapters, and as well as Tatiana Garevna, I will focus on some maybe doubts or questions or comments or clarifications, maybe, uh, since this is an interesting paper. So I have some comments. Uh, my comments are uh, can be divided into uh, two parts, but composition and other possible ways of interpretation. Uh, let me start with the compositional uh, comments. So let me start by saying, as Vanellin uh, sets forth the goal of her work, the study of, instead of description of the use of means of evaluation, uh, parallel in Russian from the position of functional grammar, page 8. So this comma means that the author uh, lists two goals here. So when we read the uh, research part of the paper, chapter 3, we see that the first part of this goal is connected with chapter 2 and the second part with chapter 3. So this uh, leaves an impression on the structure of the work, but such composition has positive and negative features. The positive side is that the material is presented uh, in more detail, but it has the negative side as well. Uh, the work is poorly centered or heterogeneous, and as a result, the uh, I'd like to say that such a heterogeneous nature is uh, can also be traced in the way the author formulates the object, describes the object of his study. We come across several definitions of the object. In the part where the author describes the author, I'm quoting, the object is a system of the means of ex uh, expressing evaluation different linguistic units, includes linguistic units with evaluative semantics, some structures that re uh, reflect evaluation. But if we proceed to provisions set forth for defense, the second provision uh, says the object of assessed potentially evaluative constructions with non-opposing uh, uh, semantics. So here the object or part of the object so should be formulated differently. This contradiction is uh, understandable because the author is talking about the object of chapter two of the work and not of the uh, entire thesis. Next, I'd like to say that this study by Vainilin 
uh, is certainly relevant. So here I fully agree with my colleagues. And moreover, it's even bigger than uh, she describes. It's not limited uh, to uh, be in the, it's a blue part of the functional grammar, realizing a system of grammatical syntactical means of expression. Page seven. The work is certainly, and we have discussed that already, is relevant uh, for the study of means of expression, expressing evaluation, and this is uh, mentioned on pages 141, 142 and for the study of Russian colloquial speech, because evaluative construction, constructions are connected with colloquial speech. I would, uh, of uh, more specific comments, uh, well, speaking, uh, no, let me stick with uh, the composition. I have some doubt about the need to put forth the first provision, which is uh, the category evolution develops uh, through interaction of grammar, semantics, and pragmatics. So this is an obvious thing uh, which uh, does not need uh, to be defended. And the pr third, uh, I mean, the entire third provision includes three or four sentences, and should be it should be more clearly stated and divided into several parts. In the second chapter, you review five uh, evaluative constructions, but uh, you never explain why you have chosen exactly these five constructions and uh, why you have uh, why you have selected exactly these five structures. Are these all structures uh, or you know, only some of them? So please share uh, how the selection was made, was done. Uh, and you say, uh, uh, you mentioned as your third task, some uh, evaluative constructions in the Russian language. Uh, some, you say, you talk of some structures, so some out of what, and why you choose these structures. Of course, it's impossible to uh, uh, describe all the structures in a thesis. And next, I would like to draw your attention to a structure, Van Yelin and uh, uh, Tatiana Ivanovna uh, has touched upon the description of uh, well done or good girl, you say, but I'm quoting, since the structure itself, the situation contains uh, uh, features of evaluation, uh, page 76, uh, you, we have suggested another way to uh, consider in this structure, there is another way to consider it. Uh, when I looked at these structures, uh, when I taught speech culture, culture, for example, uh, in practical, uh, Rosenthal in his practical uh, uh, style, yes. I uh, the, have maybe one more possible explanation. Uh, Rosa Dmitrievna Kuznetsova's works, who studied the origin of conjunctions in the Russian language, conjunctions such as Podamushto, Takshto, etc. So she says, or claims, that the origin of such conjunctions is connected uh, with uh, multiple meaning of conjunction что, that, and in colloquial speech, the meaning of что is, uh, so one of the meanings of что in colloquial speech in earlier periods was the causative. So when I looked at these structures, I had a feeling that maybe here also this что uh, is, uh, is present. So it's good of you to come, uh, though I do not uh, insist. Of course, I can't uh, don't insist. Uh, uh, regard, regardless of these comments, I uh, may say that the thesis by Vanilin on uh, the theme constructions in the system of uh, means of expressing evaluation in the Russian language corresponds to the requirements 
set on the 1st of September 2016, 6821-1 on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant Vanilin deserves awarding academic degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialty 100201, Russian language, article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated by the author. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry Vladimirovich. Now it's my turn to present my review, and I will not use my right to not to read the entire review, but only the key points. Many things have already been mentioned. For example, I like that the author's attention, uh, foc the author focuses on peripheral uh, elements of uh, the system of relation in Russian, according to Vanilin, even in uh, the border areas, we come across greater semantic differences between the two languages. Uh, which can be traced on the parallel text material. And uh, so the borders are always more interesting than the core. The periphery is always more interesting. Also, I'd like to uh, say that uh, what is good in this paper, she identifies a group of potentially evaluating uh, structures, which, according to the author in the Russian language, uh, have not been analyzed in detail individually and in uh, comparison with other structures. So this is also an advantage of the work in question. Uh, she, she is able to demonstrate very convincingly that the structures uh, the, uh, from the provisions set submitted for defense, uh, one of the uh, objects that uh, Dmitry uh, mentioned, have the status of uh, phraseological units. The syntactical units are defined in a broad sense as transitory units, grammar and vocabulary. And that's why they're interesting for the researcher and for the reader as well. So uh, since I'm, they were also interesting to me, uh, was the specific linguistic essays uh, which uh, in chapter two are of interest. These are studies dedicated to specific evaluative structures already mentioned. Uh, he is not the man too. Why not? But uh, he is like, and all, all he does is with separate attention to their syntactical and semantical properties and the uh, properties of, uh, of their capacity to express positive and negative evaluation. Uh, each of such structures against the Chinese language could be sufficient uh, object for the candidate's thesis. So, so it's good to see that she managed, the author managed to analyze them all in a, a very, with a very careful scheme of analysis. It was interesting to see different in the uh, translation practice, the qualitative data about occurrence of various feelers and components of evaluating structures in a table and in annexes. And through such qualitative analysis, one Eline identified five most frequent units, uh, not the man from ni pa silam, ni pa plichu, ni pa karmano, the practical significance of most frequently used units. And among the positive uh, components, the most frequent is the padushe. Uh, so here is uh, my uh, first critical remark. Unfortunately, all the we we only uh, given in absolute numbers, uh, which do not uh, enable give us the opportunity uh, of relative assessment, how uh, positive and how negative what they share. There's some qualitative data for other uh, structures under consideration. Here is very important: the annex two uh, frequency glossary. Uh, uh, let me remind you that uh, when we discussed the wor work, 
uh, I asked I, uh, how, what is this? I don't care. So maybe uh, one of I'll answer this question again. The uh, frequency glossary can be seen as a ready glossary of corresponding units that can be the basis for a textbook in a, uh, or a Russian textbook for foreigners. In addition, uh, I cannot miss that. I like the diachronic aspect, which Vanilin analyzes all the analyzed units. Uh, I, she identifies not only the most frequent one, but some rare ones, uh, which are not ni parilu, ni takova sorta, ni takova paroda, etc. Such uh, a study I, I, we find in other parts dedicated to other evaluating structures. Literature overview, especially in Chapter 3, uh, contains not only the Russian sources, but also the Chinese sources on uh, linguistic cultural studies. Uh, contains uh, many examples of Chinese evaluating structures uh, presented as schemes and parallel texts uh, already mentioned here. The chapter is full of Chinese examples. And here is my second and last. The chapter provides no opportunity to the Russian reader of the uh, quality of conducted analysis. Hopefully, this analysis was performed on a high level, but uh, it's hard, quite hard to uh, assess the results. But Van der Leen tried uh, as good as possible to make this analysis and even the graphical representation is trans to make it transparent and accessible for the reader. Also, I would like to mention the text of the novel contains only one potentially evaluative construction of the five most frequently used, which were analyzed in detail in the uh, previous part. You are not the man for this. Uh, for which uh, the author provides a Chinese equivalent. So how would you be translate into Chinese uh, other four evaluating structures, even without uh, uh, any examples from the parallel text? Uh, but uh, given your knowledge of your native language and uh, Peculiarities identified earlier, dedicated to analysis on the lexical level. For example, in Annex 1, the author provides such correspondences for the English language. Uh, why not, which is not connected with the work in question and the attempts to make, to create something similar for the, uh, the Chinese language, maybe. We could hear the ask the author to talk about that. So I have some a number of formal comments which I will drop because there's no they don't require answers. These minor comments do not affect the overall highly positive impression uh, made by Vanilin's work, and the list of literature contains 24 works in Chinese, uh, which is especially valuable for those interested in this work in the future and for issues of, uh, uh, of means of expression in different languages. And uh, generally speaking, the thesis of on the theme constructions in the system of ex expressing evaluation in the contemporary Russian literal language against the background of the Chinese language corresponds to the basic requirements set by the order of the, on the 1st of September 2016, number 6821 uh, on awarding academic degrees at St. Petersburg University. And the degree applicant deserves awarding the degree of Candidate of Philological Sciences, uh, Specialty 10201 Russian Language. Article 11 of the above mentioned order has not been violated. At that, uh, let us finish uh, the presentation of reviews, and I would like to give the floor to Van Lee and let her answer all the questions uh, asked. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am very flattered. And in response, uh, Natalia Viktorovna's comment, the absence of 
uh, qualitative data in these tables uh, given in absolute numbers. Let me show you. Uh, this demonstrates only the first part of Annex 2, uh, which contains words, the frequency of which is over 20. And the second part contains words with frequency, uh, the frequency of which is less than 20. And uh, in response to Tatiana Ivanovna's question about the lexical restrictions on uh, not by why, uh, let me also refer to this uh, annex. Also, in footnote 35 in the paper, we note that when selecting examples for this construction, we exclude sentences reflecting neutral attitudes such as I don't give a damn or I don't care. They are structure they structurally correspond to the structure in question but do not contain an indication of positive or negative evaluation. In the whole sample we have not come across more than twenty sentences containing neutral evaluation. However, it's also possible that the neutral evaluation or should also be included in the evaluation scale. In this case, the only difference between these expressions uh, will be that the semantic component as the basis for evaluation will be represented by nouns in the dative case, not directly connected with the experiences pers pers personal sphere. The indication of a neutral evaluation expands the range of possible justifications. Uh, in answer uh, to Ekaterina Yurina's Pratasova's question, the difference between expressions Nipagobie and Nipagobam, I uh, explain that the uh, specialization of use Nipagobam is found in its direct meaning Nipagobie. Uh, is part of construction. Uh, a man after his own patch, Pasinki Shapka, means someone is worthy of what he has. And he, uh, the, the dative is the basis for evaluation. And in the expression, Pasinki Shapka, a wrong man for the job, in the dative case, is the experience of himself. Our, this can be seen as a modification and can be called the structure of uh, experience. Uh, I appreciate your attention to this variation, but a search done on Nipasinka Shapka shows that it's not very frequent yet. Uh, thank you, Ekaterina Yurivna Pratasava, for her comment uh, off topic or out of order, uh, not according to the rank. I'd like to say that uh, the usual construction, we're talking about some of the characteristics of the experiencer and uh, not uh, uh, so this, not the, this is a, these are some uh, external circumstances. So we look at, we have considered this in the framework of uh, general comparison. And in the main corpse example, uh, not his rank, are very few, and they often refer to uh, the cause. So they are justification of something, but do not act as predicate. But if there is another predicate uh, that uh, does not belong to our uh, structure. And as for the question of Tatiana Ivana Steksova, but the principal difference between the uh, sentences uh, Natasha is not a girl to bother about uh, nonsense, and I'm not, I'm not so famous to be displayed in a show, uh, shop window. Let me say that uh, when transforming the first sentence uh, into negative, the uh, meaning is partly changed. In the 
are, are the initial statement is uh, uh, less assertive. So I would transform it as follows. Natasha would hardly bother about nonsense. And in that case, the comparison with the second expression, uh, there's no difference. Uh, so I would, uh, they, they will hardly display me in a shop window. I think this uh, issue requires uh, additional study. Uh, I'd like to th thank Tiana Ivanna for her comment on comparing structures. Uh, why not? Нет чтобы, нет бы. After I read your article on нет чтобы, semantics, pragmatics, and status, I learned about such peculiarity of functioning of why not, нет бы, which is not uh, uh, included in the context of нет, нет чтобы. Is the use of infinitive structure of conjugated form of verb in the past tense. The conjugated forms with uh, conjunction нет бы, as you mentioned in your article, нет бы can be used in contexts where the real action and the preferred action are uh, called, uh, referred to in different sentences. Uh, I agree with you. At that, we may suppose that the conjugated verb form uh, can be found in contexts where their real action and pre preferred action are mentioned in the same sentence as гулял, закрутил, and ушел in the sentence. Нет бы гулял потихоньку, так нет, закрутил, на полную шел из дома. Татьяна Ивановна asks if there is contradiction between the theory of Татьяна Андреевна Колосова and my concept of uh, interpreting example good boy for showing character and pulling off the fifth round. Thank you for your attention, paying attention to this. Uh, I think in the thesis, the sentence, somebody is uh, well done because he displayed character and pulled off the fifth round. Uh, that means there, there's no contradiction uh, in the interpretations are different. It seemed that it appeared that Tatiana Andrina Kolosov's theory is more accurate because she defines justification of evaluation and the basis for judgment. But in my opinion, the semantics of this sentence uh, does not make to recreate the structure each time. In literature, this structure is reviewed without this extension. For example, in the work of Michaelis and Lambrecht, 1996. This structure is known as a structure with a nominal extraposition. Analysis of Michaelsa and Lambrecht also does not provide for the implicit predicate of a verb, speech verb introduced by Kolosova. I thank Dmitry Vladimirovich Rudnev uh, for mentioning uh, Rosenthal. The, the uh, scientist writes the colloquial speech contains complex sentences, but the parts of which are connected by lexical syntactical means. The first part contains evaluative words such as good boy, uh, clever boy, and the second part serves to justify this judgment. For example, uh, was good of you to advocate, and I agree with that. Uh, so thank you for mentioning the possible interpretation of the conjunction. Uh, and I think that for clarification of such function, uh, it is necessary to uh, conduct a further study. The answer, question, answer of about interpretation of examples 108, 109. I would say that I don't think that fear in examples 108 and 109 acts as evaluation. Of course, these words uh, directly refer to evaluation, but not in our example. 
because uh, they did not cones, their syntactical structure is different. I beg your pardon. And Tatiana Ivanovna's question uh, about, uh, about translation of construction list kind of novel. I'd like to point out that in section 3332 of the thesis, we show one uh, structure described in chapter 2. Uh, see example 205. Not according to mine, not according to your character. So this is a modified form of potentially evaluative construction or, uh, of the type. This is beyond me. Uh, here, the possessive pronoun allows us to accentuate the features of the hero's character and of his uh, character, of his, of his mind. It's interesting that in translation, the translator chose uh, to convey its meaning. Uh, this is not a thing done by you. And the second expression is translated, both uh, the meaning as well as its form. So therefore, we can determine that uh, she recognizes this structure. Natalia Viktorovna Viktoran asks, how could we translate into the Chinese language the other four evaluative constructions? Thank you for paying attention to this. Uh, let's look at the following examples. The book, the book is not so interesting to read it for the second time. So the Chinese, the book is not so interesting. It's not worth reading for the second time. It's, it's, uh, it's fully corresponds. The structure, молодец что. So the translator, что uh, is missing. Нет чтобы. So she is unwilling to do, but but the structure with we and только can be translated as, for example, examples five and six. The literal translation is, I did this myself. Is my liver is good. All you can do is charge me money and give me injections. Uh, and as the journalists and psychologists can only criticize you or laugh at you. What shame. So this can be translated. It's a syntactical expression uh, which can be translated. Uh, all you can do is this. So this lexical expression, such, uh, there's no such structure in, China, in the Chinese language. A phraseological expression that would convey this meaning. Uh, according to Olga Alexandrovna, in uh, the pearls of Chinese phraseology, Russian and Chinese phraseological units have different structures. They are different. And people who use them are different. In the Chinese language, this is uh, the teachers. And in Russian, is a cunning uh, man. Thank you, Tatiana Ivanovna Afanasieva, Afanasi, for her comment. Uh, the meaning of particles in our in our material. Uh, the particle nu does not contain evaluative meaning, but signals that the next expression will be a result of certain markers and is more like more likely to refer to evaluation in examples 184 and 185 in uh, in Chinese sentences I use 
the monosyllabic particle chow, uh, the uh, Russian and the adverbial degree gen, the meaning of which is defined by uh, the determined by the uh, large Chinese Russian dictionary. Uh, use the uh, the uh, Russian discourse words of Russian language, uh, discourse of Russian, for example, example 184, the particle prosto uh, indicates that element X is present in the maximally isolated form, which is adequately translated in the Chinese text. Yekaterina Yurivna Pratasova asks about properties of the Chinese language to communicate to bring to the end and uh, the uh, peculiarities of specific approach. Thank you for paying attention. And we may say that the implicit meanings, of course, may not be obvious to uh, some representative of another culture. So for the uh, would be uh, to avoid misunderstanding and the degree of depends on the individual style of the translator certainly and uh, thank you Tatiana Ivanovna Steksova for valuable comment to a uh, Far Eastern scientific school I have after I have read the article, the description of words in the concept of Far Eastern syntactic school, and the, so I learned that the notion of structure also describes the instrument of description of service words. So, but there is an important difference in the modern interpretation, contemporary of the term is non of the content of the structure, while the Far Eastern school defines this element as, as, as optional. And I may say that we uh, use the more, the narrower interpretation of this term. And thank you, Tatiana Ivanovna Fostesa for her comment on the lack of parameters uh, for differentiation of syntactic structures, we shall try to increase, increase the list of parameters and other further studies. I thank you for the valuable comment about defined dictum and modus. Uh, evaluation in my work uh, did not contain such differentiation, but in most cases, uh, I mean uh, modus evaluation because the subject of evaluation is the speaker himself. And I thank Tatiana Ivanovna for her comment about the uh, principal differences between uh, uh, it's good or it's bad uh, from the structure. It's good to read, reading is good. I wanted to say that the structure хорошо, плохо что. The ellipsis of subject has occurred at that the object part uh, acts as the subject. So this is sen sentential actant, actor. And th because of this peculiarity, it's prone to expression of modus uh, evaluation. And in the structure, uh, it's good to read books the subject, the definitive, uh, read, uh, read, книги читать. In that case, we call, we talk about the modus evaluation connected with the description of the entire situation. I thank Dmitry Vladimirovich Rudnev uh, for his comment about the uh, first provision. We may agree, uh, but let us pay attention I mean, draw your attention that the co interaction makes it possible implicit expression. And that is why we started by stating a very uh, popular, a very quite a well known fact and can be divided into several because 
implicit if is requires additional explanation. Dmitry Vladimirovich Rudnev has asked on what basis these fast structures were uh, selected. I uh, thank you for your attention. We have defined the structures uh, on the basis of their non-compositionality. -compos they contain hidden evaluative component. These five structures have not been studied in detail. Four of them are characterized by reference to justification of evaluation, and the fifth one has uh, evaluative interpretation, which uh, will be defined, I beg your pardon, in the uh, final set of such structures. It's always possible to, we may always suppose to define that new types will be defined. At that, the description of the above mentioned five structures already enables us to conclude, uh, make a conclusion of their common properties uh, to which we have limited ourselves. Uh, thank you, Ekaterina Yurevna Pratasova, about her comment about uh, mind and emotion. And uh, here we relied uh, not only on uh, explicit and implicit expression. And in my opinion, uh, these are two different things. Uh, opinion, that's mind. Emotional uh, evaluation depends on the subject, while rational uh, mostly relies on the object properties. Uh, you may call that a continuum uh, that without explicit borders. I thank Tatiana Igorevna Afanasieva uh, for attention uh, to ex status of explicit evaluation in the, uh, uh, the explicit evaluation uh, plays a major role in this system. Uh, it guess understanding how the speaker uh, is, is without using specialized vocabulary but compare valley uh, odzev or zdirjana pahvala reserved praise etc and in order to understand the implicit assessment and to be able to give it a good command of the language is required and as implicit means of expressing evaluation, and, uh, it's, I think it is important that it, there is uh, hardly no difference. In the Chinese language, we use almost, uh, potentially uh, evaluative construction. For example, on page 111 of the thesis, provided Chinese scheme in Example 150, x is some x. Here, x acts as a noun, and some adjectives seldom come across uh, word combinations or clauses. Uh, they communicate negative attitude, negative attitude towards the subject. Uh, the, but this meaning is not derived uh, from the explicit structure and to the, the reference to explicit evaluation of these two, in these two languages uh, it is necessary to conduct uh, an additional study thank you very much uh, thank you Vanilin, for all your detailed answers dear colleagues uh, Council members, are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, I am. Tatiana Ivanovna? Yes. Yekaterina Yurevna? Yes, of course. And Tatiana uh, Yurevna? Yes. Then we can proceed to the next item of our next point. Do Is anyone uh, willing to speak who is not a member of the dissertation council uh, very well then let me give the floor to uh, 
Marinia. Mitrivna, could you please talk about uh, Vanilin? Could you talk about the applicant? Please talk, Marina Mitrivna, please talk about the applicant. Dear colleagues, Vanilin came to St. Petersburg uh, to uh, be enrolled in a doctoral course back in 2015. A large group of Chinese students arrived and they uh, passed exams in China and many of them had little experience of speaking Russian not to say uh, the uh, the training of, uh, in Slavic languages is different uh, they have to learn the language uh, with a different structure. Of course, these challenges are obvious. Uh, if we make even a small part, to even if we make a small attempt to learn a couple of Chinese words, so the language barrier is really strong. And uh, before she came here, and before she came here and spent almost five years, four and a half years in Russia, because Van Ilin uh, graduated with her uh, course and worked as, a, as an intern in the Institute of Linguistic Studies of Russian Academy of Sciences. First three years, uh, the, the first period was not enough to finish her thesis. And uh, well, this is obvious. And I think uh, during these years, Van Elin has learned a lot and has taken a huge step forward in her command of Russian. It's much better because in her first works, we had to rewrite uh, completely. And the last articles she wrote independently, we only discussed the uh, content. And uh, speaking of Elaine, I, uh, oh, this is a, uh, a fighter. Uh, she's a real fighter who always does what she has planned, and that is why she always achieves her results. And uh, all the the amount of effort she has invested, she always she can always reach what she wants to achieve, even though it's very hard uh, as it was in the beginning. And that's a very valuable proper quality. Uh, we met regularly and almost always uh, she initiated. I didn't uh, have to hunt after her. She always contacted me said, I want to discuss a specific piece with you. And what uh, particularly impressed me is that uh, she sent me a piece. And uh, so she always uh, highlighted the part she wanted to discuss uh, in an amazing, she's uh, amazingly well organized. And, uh, and I think this is one of the reasons the work was written and all her papers, all her articles got published. Yes, so I'm very satisfied with our cooperation, and I will miss her. But hopefully, we will not say farewell because hopefully she will continue her our cooperation in the future. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you because I understand that. Uh, is a very that was a very interesting discussion and all your questions that you have asked I understand that Eileen uh, has answered them as best as she could but I I'm sure these questions will not be forgotten by us I assure you and she will certainly uh, uh, take a second look another look at all your questions and especially if uh, she will continue her work. Thank you, Marina Rivna. I think she is already she already misses you. 
Now, let me ask all the dissertation council members, since our session is held with some members working in the remote access mode, please let me know if you have any, or maybe the degree applicant herself, or maybe uh, Marina Dmitrievna, if you have any unanswered questions connected with working in the remote access mode. If you do, please let me know. I see uh, everybody is well and everybody is satisfied. Dear colleagues, now, before, the, uh, before voting, we have the opportunity to take a technical break to discuss the results uh, and the sound shall be switched off. Or we don't need such a break and we can proceed straight to voting. Do you think we need such a break? I, I can see. Dmitry Vladimirovich, what do you think? Shall we vote? Uh, I think everything is clear. Tatiana Ivanovna, I think we can proceed to voting. Tirinirna, yes, same. Uh, I agree. Okay, then let us skip the break and let us vote. Let us discuss the results. I put the question of awarding to Vanilin the degree of candidate of philological sciences, a scientific specialty 10.0201 Russian language to the open individual vote. Let me remind you that a decision of the dissertation council on awarding the degree shall be considered positive if uh, at least over more than a half, but at least three members of the dissertation council present voted for it according to Article 23 of the order. So you have to give your opinion, council member Tatiana Igorevna Afanasieva. Your opinion? My opinion is definitely uh, positive to award the desired degree. Dmitry Vladimirovich, your opinion? Uh, I certainly think the applicant deserves the degree. A special to 10201, thank you. Tatiana Ivanovna? Uh, yes, positive. I think the applicant deserves the degree. Yekaterina Yurievna? Panelin deserves the degree. And me, as the chairman, and uh, uh, reviewer also believe that Van uh, Lin deserves the degree. Uh, so voting was easy and counting is easy. Dear colleagues and guests, let me inform you that out of five voting members of the decision council, five voted for, no one voted against, and no one abstained. The decision on awarding to Vanilin the degree of candidate of philological sciences, specialty 10201 Russian language, has been made. Dear colleagues, since our session is held with some uh, participants working in the remote access mode, do council members or the degree applicant have any comments uh, to the procedure. Dmitry Vladimirovich, Tatiana Ivanovna, uh, no comments. Ekaterina Yurevna, no comments. Tatiana Igorevna, no comments. Very well. Then, uh, Van Lin is given the floor for her closing remarks. Van Lin, the floor is yours. Welcome. First of all, uh, let me express my sincere gratitude to all members of the Dissertation Council. I am very grateful to Professor Natalia Viktorovna Bogdanova Beglarian for conducting the session. And thank you, Professor Yekaterina Yurivna Protasova, for taking part in this session as a, as a foreign expert. I thank Professor Tatiana Ivanovna Steksova for her great attention to my work 
and valuable comments. And I'd like to thank Professor Tatiana Igorevna Afanasyeva and Associate Professor Dmitry Vladimirovich Rudnev for their comments and helps. Uh, and care and special thanks to my academic advisor, Professor Maria Dmitrievna Vajekova. You have always provided help, not only with my studies, but also in my life. I learned, I enjoyed your lectures, and you are a careful listener. Uh, from you, I learned how to become a real researcher. And I wish to be such a noble person like you. You have played a major role in my journey to success. And may your life be full of good. My work on uh, was possible thanks to support of the Department of Russian Language of St. Petersburg University and the Department of Grammar Theory at uh, Grammar Theory Institute of Russian Academy of Sciences. The employees provided me with the opportunity to use arrays of text and to share views. And finally, let me thank my colleagues and friends for their kind support and help. And my parents, of course, are unlimited gratitude. And uh, uh, I'm very excited and uh, a little tense, but uh, everything went well. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Van Lin. Uh, we all congratulate Van Lin. Uh, with uh, being awarded the degree, I declare the session closed. Thank you for your participation. Everybody, please stop online broadcasting. Thank you.